It's Starly, your tutor, giving you more information on more equipment. Today I'm going to talk about two pieces of equipment, the dichroscope and the spectroscope, and we use them in a similar method, so I thought it would be useful to put them on one, one uh, little video here. The first one we're going to talk about is the dichroscope. There are two popular types of dichroscopes. The London dichroscope that we use has a Polaroid plate in it, and if you recall, Polaroid film results in plain polarized light, light vibrating only in one direction. When you look at your filter here, you can see a line across the middle. The Polaroid plate on this side is, has the, the planes lined up in this direction. The Polaroid plate on the lower half has the lines vibrating in this direction. What we're going to try to do is in a doubly refractive stone, we're going to try and catch the two different rays that are exiting the gemstone and we're going to figure out what color they are and you can also figure out the optic axes in the gemstone, the direction of single refraction. So the dichroscope is really simple. You take your flex lamp, turn it on, I place my stone right on top of it, holding it with my fingers. Again, in colored stones a lot of times we don't use our tweezers. This is such a simple piece of equipment. I place it over the stone and I turn it in a circle with the halfway zone of the dichroscope halfway across the stone. And I turn it in a circle and try and catch the rays coming out of the gemstone. Now, we know that every stone has at least one direction of single refraction. So you could be looking down the direction of single refraction. So it's really important to look at the stone in three different directions. So here it is, table down and I'm going to look through it this way. Then I'm going to flip it up on its side and I'm going to use the dichroscope all the way around it. And then I'm going to turn it in this direction, flipping it, flipping it up and looking through it in that direction. So I look through it in three different directions. And the reason is, is that some stones are trichroic, tri meaning three croic colors. And what that means particularly if you look at tanzanite and sometime, well, tanzanite in particular. In one direction, you'll see blue and brown in the filter. One side will be one color and one side will be the other color. And then when I look through this other direction, I'll see one of those two colors and purple. So in this direction, I see blue and brown. And in this direction, I will see blue or brown and the color purple. So with this dichroscope I'll actually see three different colors. So that's also a very identifying characteristic if the stone is trichroic or dichroic. So again, nice and simple. Place a stone on, well, let's use a smaller one. Place a stone directly on top of the light. Turn your, oh this is a great stone. Ruby's lovely because it does this purple and red or orange and red colors. Turn it in a circle and just observe the two different colors. Yes, larger stones are easier, but small stones can be exactly the same results. You can also get a dichroscope that looks like this that can have the Polaroid plates on the end of it, or in this case, the stone has a piece of calcite in it, which is strongly double refractive, and it separates the, the rays into two different lights. And I, I touch it right to the stone, and I turn it in a circle, and try and see the two different colors and again I would look in all three directions turning it in a circle to see if the stone is dichroic or trichroic. Obviously singly refractive stones are not going to give you a result because they keep light in one wavelength and uh, if you're looking down the optic axes you will not get a result and if the stone is colorless you're not going to get a result. So that's simply the dichroscope. The next piece of equipment is the spectroscope. I am one I always look through the wrong end. You look through the end that's kind of pointed. And when you look through it, you'll see a, the whole rainbow spectrum through it. And the way the spectroscope works is you analyze the light that's coming through the gemstone and you'll be able to see zones of absorption, which are black lines within the spectrum, which tell us or indicate uh, the elements that may be responsible for its color. We use it exactly the same way. We put the stone right on top of our light source and we put the spectroscope to our eye and we can actually touch the spectroscope right to the stone. On this piece of equipment I close my, my other eye and I 
move it along the stone and see if I can find the spectrum. If you can't find it in one direction, flip it up, look in another direction. Still can't find it, flip it in another direction. And don't just look in the same spot. Sometimes you have to move along the stone in one section. In the blue, you'll see two lines. And then you move it along and you'll see two lines in the red. They're all part of the same spectrum. They just didn't show all at the same time. So the spectroscope's a little bit more of a hunt and find kind of situation but you do actually get a proof positive of the identification of a stone with this spectroscope. If it has a certain spectrum, like the ruby, it is proof that it's a ruby. It doesn't tell you if it's a natural or synthetic ruby, but it will tell you it's a ruby. Some people really like this direct light method, and this is the method that I prefer to use, but I've had students that are really reveling in using reflected light. The reflected light method, you have to remember that the light, the angle of the incident light will be equal to the angle of reflected light. So it's important that you line up your spectroscope on the same angle that the light is coming through the stone. I shine the light on the stone and I bring my spectroscope right up to the stone and I'll turn it and move it along and I'll analyze this bright reflected light and try and get it that way. So some people just love this method, the reflected light method. So I tend to use <clears throat> a larger mag light for this. It's just a flashlight. And I hold my finger like this across the top and I put the stone against it. The reason I like doing this, especially with new students, is I have you look over the light source first and then go over the stone so that you can see how the spectrum has changed. And that is sometimes an easier way of doing it because you see the full spectrum, especially if you're using an incandescent light source, obviously a fluorescent light source uh, has absorption lines in it. So I move it along, move it over the stone so I can analyze what's coming through. And then I note the strength of the bands, how wide they are. So it would be a weak diffused band or a strong line in the red, so we describe it that way. We describe our spectrums by the strengths and, and locations and widths of the band. So the spectroscope, again, two ways of doing it, reflected light or transmitted light. Both work equally well. And just while we're here, I'm just going to show you the Chelsea filter. The method is the same as using the uh, spectroscope. With reflected light, you hold it over Look, you reflect the light through the stone, hold your Chelsea filter here, and you just look and see what color of light is coming through the gemstone. The Chelsea filter is a really elementary piece of equipment, and I really like it for blue topaz and aquamarine. It's a great separator for those two stones. So again, Chelsea filter, very, very simple. So that's it. Those were simple. Time to get to work. Bye.